Is snail mucin actually worth all the hype? In today's video, we are gonna talk about five benefits of snail mucin in skincare. By the end of the video, you should have a good idea as to whether or not it is worth incorporating this trendy ingredient into your skincare routine. Mucin is just a term for a class of compounds that are proteins with sugars attached to them. And mucin is the main component of mucus gland secretions, which coat delicate epithelial surfaces to protect them from microbial and physical damage. Animals produce mucin to protect these delicate surfaces and snails produce very large quantities of mucin. Snail mucin has been harvested and compounds within it identified and it is of interest for a variety of biomedical applications. The number one benefit of incorporating snail mucin into your skincare routine is simply it is very hydrating. It is rich in humectants, peptides, hyaluronic acid. These things act in your skin to improve water retention, especially in the stratum corneum. Improvement in water retention helps support barrier health and allows your skin to protect you better from the outside world. It helps reduce irritation. It helps reduce dryness. Optimizing water content in the stratum corneum also improves skin texture by facilitating better skin barrier turnover as the enzymes in your skin need water to function optimally. But the other aspect of snail mucin that makes it of particular interest for hydrating and moisturizing the skin is that it is very slimy, it's very slippery, which to a certain extent has a lot of visual appeal, at least in marketing. But if you've ever used snail mucin, you'll notice that it has this effect of almost cloaking your skin in a thin film that is deeply hydrating. Some people do not care for this texture, but it does in fact envelop your skin in what is almost like a nice hydrating hug. And this acts to help reduce water loss from the skin while not being heavy or green greasy, and while still allowing for good evaporation of sweat so you don't feel overheated. But all that to say, snail mucin is not the only humectant-based thing in the skincare game. Hyaluronic acid is readily available in numerous products without requiring snail filtrate. Peptides are a dime a dozen these days. Then you have glycerin, which is a very inexpensive hydrating humectant to help improve water content in the skin. To what extent snail mucin is any better though than these other humectants that are readily available on the market remains to be determined. Now, many of the studies using topical snail mucin for the skin do compare it to a control vehicle and show improvement above and beyond the control vehicle. But still, to what extent snail mucin compares to other humectants that are readily available in skincare, it's hard to say for sure. Ultimately, it probably boils down to the formulation overall, but it's something to keep in mind that it's easy to hype up and market snail mucin because it's somewhat bizarre, it's somewhat intriguing, it has a fascination aspect to it, but objectively speaking, to what extent it's any better than any other humectant, I think we really do need more research. So don't get too swayed into thinking that this is going to be a game changer. It may make no difference in your skincare routine. Another ingredient that I think could compete with snail mucin, depending on the product formulation, is something called polyglutamic acid. I have a video all about this ingredient, and I like it too because it's hydrating, but it also has that kind of slippery consistency to it that cloaks the skin and reduces water loss without being heavy or greasy. I would really love to see some comparisons between polyglutamic acid and snail mucin and to see like, mm, I don't know, maybe they're about the same. I would suspect perhaps that's possible. In my experience, products with polyglutamic acid, they do have that slippery, slimy, cloak your skin effect. One thing about polyglutamic acid, like snail mucin, is I do think that these are more costly ingredients for manufacturers and maybe more difficult to source. All that to say, yes, this ingredient is hydrating. Yes, this ingredient offers the potential to smooth out your skin surface, diminishing the appearance of fine lines, but to what extent it is any different than any other hydrating ingredients, I do think objectively um, it's worth taking a few steps back and really critically evaluating what is available on the market in terms of other things that might offer you those benefits. But there's no research to compare snail mucin to any of these others in a really rigorous fashion to say which one really is best. Advantage number two of snail mucin in skincare is it has been investigated for uh, its effects on wound healing. Your face is not a wound, but whenever we hear wound healing, it offers the potential for regeneration, maybe leaning more into an anti-aging benefit for helping improve barrier turnover, smoothing out rough texture, you know, as we get 
older, our skin does not turn over as efficiently. So, you know, there's some interest there. Or, you know, if you're in a situation where you have used too many skincare products, your barrier is disrupted, you have a lot of irritation, you need some healing, you need some recovery, maybe something with wound healing properties could help you out. One of the most noteworthy aspects about snail mucin for wounds is that it has antibacterial properties. Snail mucin from certain species of snails have antibacterial compounds in them that are of great interest in wound healing because wounds quickly become colonized by bacteria that create a lot of inflammation and further slow down the healing process and complicate the wound requiring antibiotics. And a serious issue in healthcare right now is antimicrobial resistance. Basically the bacteria, the microbes, they become resistant to the treatments that we have. So there is a push, there's always a need to innovate and develop new approaches to targeting these pathogenic creatures as they can often quickly develop resistance. Not only do wound infections create a lot more inflammation, but they lead to swelling. And when the tissue swells, the new healthy cells, they are not able to migrate into the wound bed as efficiently. So that really leads to slowing down of the wound healing process and complicates things. Bacteria like Staphylococcus, E. coli, Enterococcus, Proteus, Klebsiella, these bad boys can really cause a lot of problems for patients who have chronic wounds. Chronic wounds are not rare. They're actually very common. There are medical clinics all over the world that specialize in just treating wounds. It requires treatment from multiple angles, utilizing multiple medical specialties, and antibiotics frequently crop up as something that is necessary due to the infection. But again, the bacteria that often colonize these wounds, they readily become resistant resistant to the antimicrobials that we have, necessitating alternative approaches to targeting these infections. A compound in snail mucin from some snail species is a casein, and this has been shown to kill gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. The other scenario for which snail mucin has been shown to be beneficial for healing is in the setting of something called acute radiation dermatitis that patients develop who are getting radiation treatment for their cancer. And radiation dermatitis is a lot like a burn. Therefore, things that help with healing and recovery you know, are likely going to help that. Snail mucin has been shown to help uh, with radiation dermatitis. And it's thought to do this because snail mucin has antioxidants in it and it can help improve the antioxidants in your skin, uh, acting through superoxide dismutase and glutathione transferase. And antioxidants are necessary for combating free radical damage that leads to slowing down of the healing process. We don't just experience wounds on our skin, but other epithelial surfaces like our gut can get wounded, like a peptic ulcer, a gastric ulcer, and snail mucin taken internally has actually been shown to be promising for healing and recovery of gastric ulcers. It stimulates the proliferation of fibroblasts, which is a necessary aspect of wound healing. Snail mucin has also been shown to lead to better clinical outcomes after laser treatment for cosmetic reasons, namely showing a reduction in side effects like redness, burning, and stinging. But if you are someone shopping through Target, Sephora, Ulta, Walmart, the drugstore, and you see snail mucin, you're, you know, you're there shopping for skincare, you probably don't have one of these medical conditions. That's, that's probably not why you're there, right? Like you don't have a chronic wound. So to what extent these studies and, and these biomedical applications apply to the everyday consumer, that's something that's important to keep in mind. Benefit number three falls under the territory of, you know, anti-aging. But by that, I mean improvement in the appearance of wrinkles. Is it actually going to remove wrinkles? Is it actually going to improve collagen production? Who knows? That has not been examined. A research study demonstrated that participants who applied snail mucin around the eyes daily for 12 weeks showed a significant improvement in the appearance of wrinkles compared to placebo. And placebo was used on the other half of their face. So they did the snail to one eye and the placebo to the other. And by the end of the study, there was a statistically significant improvement in wrinkles with the snail compared to placebo. So there's a control there for just the benefits seen to wrinkles with just consistent moisturizing. And importantly, the improvement in wrinkles was sustained 
two weeks after stopping using the snail mucin. They didn't look beyond that, but it does suggest that it has some lasting improvement in the appearance of wrinkles. Now, whether or not that is mediated through changing your collagen, elastin in the skin, or simply sustained hydration, which can have a wrinkle smoothing effect, that has not been demonstrated. This study just looked at wrinkle appearance. They didn't actually go in and measure collagen. They didn't actually take biopsies and measure any changes in skin thickness in, in that way. Possible benefit number four is one that has only been shown in cells in a dish. And that is, it has been suggested that compounds in snail mucin may have an anti-tumor effect, namely on melanoma cells. What that means though for you, a consumer putting it on your skin, it means nothing. Unless you're a cell in a dish, I would not hang my hat on anything about this being anti tumor anti-skin cancer. It is really interesting though that for melanoma cells in a dish, uh, snail mucin does appear to have some very um, promising effects on melanoma cell biology that in theory later on down the road would be really interesting if we could translate those to human use because melanoma is a very deadly skin cancer that often is treatment resistant. We do have better treatments these days than we did you know, 20 years ago allowing patients to live longer, but the, the disease is quite deadly and it can be treatment resistant. So there's, again, a, a need to always be innovating and looking to other ways to approach treatment, just like bacteria can become resistant, cancer can be resistant to treatment. So that same pressure is there. Compounds in snail mucin are promising for anti-cancer potential, but when you hear that, don't just assume that putting it on your skin is going to have any sort of anti-cancer benefit for you. It's certainly not anything that's going to protect you from melanoma or skin cancer. The best thing that you can do to protect your skin from skin cancer is to protect it from the sun and not go in a tanning bed. Now, the final benefit of snail mucin is it is very promising as a vehicle for better drug delivery. Whether that be topical medications that you use to your skin to treat a skin condition, or whether it be something that you take by mouth to treat a medical condition where you need better absorption of a medication. Snail mucin is really of interest in pharmacology as a as a drug delivery system. Any medication that is going to be absorbed through the mucosal tract, snail mucin is really of interest for pairing that uh, to, to allow for better delivery. For example, if you are taking a medication that needs to be absorbed through your digestive tract, well, that, that is, that is you know, a, a place where maybe snail mucin is promising. It's very water loving, so that allows for better diffusion into mucosal surfaces. So those are five benefits of snail mucin as it's been laid out in the literature for you know, mostly showing promise down the road for biomedical application, but again, more research is needed. So all that to say, like, should you incorporate this ingredient into your skincare routine? It's a safe ingredient and it does offer the potential to improve moisture content. It does offer the potential to smooth out the skin surface, which can have a wrinkle smoothing effect. Can also improve the appearance of pores simply by hydrating the skin. When the skin is plumped up, pores appear less obvious. Personally, I can attest to those outcomes. I see them myself when I use snail mucin in my skincare routine. It definitely works in my experience, my subjective experience, it definitely works. Snail mucin can be used with any other ingredient. It's not going to negatively impact other ingredients. It could be used with prescription medications provided you tolerate the combination. In theory, pairing things alongside snail mucin may enhance penetration of certain ingredients, which can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. When you have enhanced penetration of things, maybe you get better results, but you also may increase the risk of irritation. Some people do develop irritation from snail mucin. Nothing can predict if that's gonna happen for you, but if you've tried snail mucin and you found it irritating, probably not worth it for you to continue trying trying to give it a try. There's so many products out there with humectants and hydrating ingredients. Stick to something that works for you. You're not gonna miss out by not having snail mucin in your routine. I hear people on social media, especially over on TikTok, singing the praises of snail mucin, and they make a lot of claims that I have to side eye and clarify to you guys. First of all, snail mucin is not a treatment for acne. Some people claim, you know, oh, this cleared up my skin. It is moisturizing, it is hydrating, and moisturizing the skin is very important for people with acne because they do have a skin barrier problem often that 
can lead to more inflammation in the skin and worsen the acne. Uh, and a lot of acne treatments are very drying and irritating. So moisturizer use in general is, is encouraged for people who have acne. The lightweight consistency of of snail mucin may be preferable for people who have acne and oily skin because again, it doesn't feel heavy or greasy. It's not oily on the skin surface, but keep in mind, it's not an actual acne treatment. Um, in theory, you know, the antibacterial effects, the anti-inflammatory properties in snail mucin, they may help with acne. Wouldn't surprise me, but just know it's not a proven acne treatment. The other hype around snail mucin that I hear that is not correct is that it will treat a scar. It will not. In theory, it may help reduce scarring because it's anti-inflammatory, but there's no research to support that. And it certainly will not remove an existing scar. Many people on social media also confuse scar with post inflammatory marks, whether it be post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, post-inflammatory redness, or post-inflammatory hypopigmentation. Those three things are not scars. So I do think some people find that using snail mucin over time improves the appearance of those things, but those things do oftentimes resolve on their own. So don't lean into snail mucin thinking it is the solution for these. Yes, moisturizing is helpful in these conditions to reduce irritation to protect the skin from irritants, but snail mucin is not going to go in and reverse these things. There's nothing in snail mucin as it stands now that is, has been established that addresses hyperpigmentation. There's no compound in it that is necessarily going to go in and inhibit tyrosinase or you know, prevent the spread of melanin to the surrounding skin to address hyperpigmentation in any way. So don't be misled into thinking that. Anything that is very hydrating to the skin, whether it be snail mucin, hyaluronic acid, glycerin, peptides, anything that hydrates the skin and improves the moisture content in the skin, it has this effect of light scattering, which improves skin luminosity and overall skin tone and can subtly diminish the appearance of dark spots. But as soon as you stop using the ingredients, the skin loses that moisture the dark spots, they're still there, and so they didn't ever go away. Take home points, snail mucin, it's not just an overhyped ingredient. There is evidence to suggest that it has value in skincare, um, and a lot of people truly do see benefit using it. But if you don't like it, you don't get along with it, you find it irritating, there are many other hydrating ingredients out there. I have a lot of videos on this channel about things like polyglutamic acid, hyaluronic acid, peptides, so check those out. You're definitely not missing out if you can't hack snail mucin or you're just put off by the texture. Uh, the skincare market, the skincare industry is packed with plenty of other options to hydrate and smooth the skin. So, you know, don't, don't feel left out. There, there are plenty of other things to buy out there. I'm not sponsored by CauseRx. I've never been sponsored by them, but I do use their snail products and I genuinely see a market improvement in skin suppleness, smoothness, and hydration when I use them. Uh, so those would be my go-to recommendations. But if you want to know how like their essence compares to uh, peach slices, another snail product on the market. On the end slate, I'm going to link up my review of those two, comparing and contrasting them in terms of texture and performance and ingredients. So check that one out if you are looking around for snail. Uh, but if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.